In Unify Network Controller, if you go to a switch under settings, you can find this setting called Network Override. If you enable it, you can choose a VLAN. Ubiquiti doesn't do a good job here explaining what this setting is. In old versions, it's called Management Network, which was much clearer. In fact, it's a type of in-band management. Before we dig deeper, let's talk about in general what outer band management and in band management are. This Wikipedia article explains what is outer band management. The audience is system administrator. The target device is server or network attached equipment, of course, including switches. But it's not the regular network management we think of because it's for accessing and managing devices and infrastructure at remote location through a separate management plane. The separate plane is a determined factor about whether it's outer band or in band. The iDRAC from Dell is a perfect example of outer band management. So it has its own CPU memory network interface card. It's like a tiny computer running separately inside the Dell's rack mount servers. It's a super convenient, super good tool for system administrator. This is a 10 gigabit PoE switch from Ubiquiti. It's from previous generation. It has a RJ45 serial part. I can use a cheap USB adapter connected with a computer. From Mac, I can use this command to connect to the USB TTY device using the indicated port rate. Then I can log in to the Unify switch, just like how you SSH into it. Then I can do whatever you can do in SSH session. This is another example from Microtech switch. So you can see in the upper switch, there are two management interfaces. The upper one is a serial console part. The lower one is a seemingly regular ethernet part. Let me use the same USB adapter, connect to the serial part, log on like you are using SSH, and then I can issue any management command here. For the other Ethernet management part, I can even use browser to access the modern UI to do network management. Now let's compare outer band and in band. On the screen, you can see two different unified switches from two generations. The lower one has outer band management interface, a serial part, and both the two switches also support in band management through the regular network parts. Outer band management interfaces are not connected to the switching fabric and do not participate in the normal network functions such as spanning tree or VLAN. Because in-band management interfaces are connected to the switching fabric and participate in those network functions, the downside is potentially the switch can be isolated and unmanageable if the connectivity to the device is lost. For example, there's a spanning tree loop or the fabric connections are cut. The benefit of only supporting in-band management, of course, is because it's easier and cheaper to produce. So that's why here we are for all the current generation Unify switches, we only have in-band management. For example, in this Unify PoE switch, if you check the technical specifications, you can see for management interface is Ethernet in-band. Next, let's dig deeper about Unify Network Management VLAN. The system allows you to choose a existing VLAN for the virtual network for a specific switch. But what this VLAN is from and what's the consequence if you set the VLAN? In the left side document from Ubiquiti, if you scroll down, it has a section for Unified Devices Management Network. 
The so-called management network is the network that your switch uses to communicate with your network application. And by default, the management network will be assigned according to the native VLAN for the switch port which the switch is connected to. So for example, in the right side, in my lab environment, there are two unified switches, a pro switch and a non-pro switch. So the pro switch, you can see from the information here, the uplink is port 4 of this unified router. And for the non-pro switch, the uplink is port 25 of this pro switch. So which means for the pro switch, how do we know what's its management VLAN? It's the native VLAN for port 4 of the router. For the non-pro switch, its management VLAN is the native VLAN for the port 25 of this pro switch. In the Unify controller, you can change the management VLAN for a particular switch, right? So the requirement for the new management VLAN is it should be tagged. That particular VLAN is tagged on all the relevant switch parts between this unified switch and your network gateway. So basically all the way from this switch to the unified router, or the uplink part should be tagged with that particular VLAN. That's the requirement. It implies two very important things. First, if you don't change anything, it doesn't mean your unified switch doesn't have a management VLAN. No, it does have one. It's the native VLAN for the uplink part. In my example, for the port 4 of the router, I didn't change the native VLAN, so it has the default VLAN, VLAN 1. And for the pro switch, I didn't change the port 25, the native VLAN, so this non-pro switch will have management VLAN 1, the default VLAN. Even if you don't do anything, you still have management VLAN. The second thing is the management VLAN is in the context of a given switch, which means theoretically I can assign a VLAN X to this switch and a VLAN Y to the other switch. There's no hard requirement or the unified switches within your one single network. They must have the same management VLAN. Some people may think, okay, even if I don't do anything, all the switches, they have their default management VLAN already, then life is good. Why we still bother? Next, let's talk about why you may need a dedicated unified management network VLAN. The first problem if you do not have a dedicated network management VLAN is your regular computer's devices, they may get access to your switches. They may be able to connect and make changes. That's what you want to avoid. For example, here I have three VLANs defined, the default VLAN, the IoT VLAN, and the admin VLAN. And then in the firewall rules, denied the inter VLAN traffic and only allow the admin VLAN to access default and IoT and only allow default to access IoT. So you think your network is secured. But the problem is for the default VLAN, it has your non IoT devices, non admin devices, plus unified switches. Your unified switches are in the same VLAN as your regular computers. For example, for this Linux client machine, you can see it has the IP address dot one, which means it's in the default VLAN. For the pro switch, it has IP address dot one in the same default VLAN. And then from the Linux machine, I can ping the pro switch. And if I want, I can SSH into it. As long as I know the password, I can do whatever I want. I can do configuration changes. Someone may not think it's a big deal because to access the switch remotely, you need to know the credentials. But at least the fact that your computer is in the same VLAN as the switches, you are missing a layer of protection. 
Another problem of sharing the same relay with the client computer is the client device's activities may impact the management relay so that you may not be able to even access your switches. For example, here I have two switches. The management VLAN is also the default VLAN. In the same VLAN, I have this Linux machine. It will cause some trouble. I have another Linux machine, which I will use to try to manage my switches. Now in my lab environment, as you can see, both the unified switches and the two Linux clients, they are in the same VLAN, the default VLAN. And the left side Linux is ready to make some troubles. Before that, in the right side, let me ping the pro unified switch continuously. As you can see, the latency is about one millisecond, pretty good. In the left side, let me run this hping3 command. It's a tool to simulate the DDoS attack. Here I'm doing a type of smurf attack, dash one packet type, which is ICMP, just like ping. And then I want to do a flood attack as fast as possible. No wait, no receiving. I'm going to fake the client IP address with this one and then the target the victim will be the broadcast IP address the reason I choose the broadcast is all clients are supposed to reply start so right away in the right side you see it's frozen there's no response which means this client doesn't receive any reply because there are a lot of lost packets okay if I start Stop it. Then let me only ping 10 times, 10 packets. Let's see the final statistics. So this is the result. Average latency is eight millisecond, but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is 70% packet loss. Now, if I try to manage, let's say this switch, if I use SSH, for example, I either cannot connect to it at all or may not be able to smoothly execute commands or I may be kicked out anytime. Right? Why we have this issue? Because the troublemaker and the unified switches, they are in the same default VLAN. Okay? Then let's see how we can resolve the issue. We don't want the unified switches to be in the same VLAN as the client devices. Because the troublemaker is in VLAN 1, then let me put these two unified switches in a separate VLAN. For example, VLAN 88. Then let me try a new client which is also in VLAN 88. Let me see whether this new client can still access the unified switches when the troublemaker is making troubles. So in unified network controller, let me manage the two switches by changing them to the VLAN 88. As you can see now, the two unified switches are in subnet 88, which means they are already sitting in the new management VLAN. Because I'm going to use a new Linux client in VLAN 88, and I will connect it to the port 4 of this non-pro unified switch. Let me make sure for this switch, for the port 4, it has the native VLAN 88 as well. So we are done in the network controller side setting. Now you can see the new Linux client is connected. Before making new troubles, let me do the ping from both Linux clients. Okay, now the pings are going on. In the Troublemaker Linux machine, let me do the same thing the simulated smurf attack because the troublemaker is in VLAN 1 so I still want to flood VLAN 1. Okay, it started. You can see the effect immediately from the two Linux clients already. In the VLAN 1 client, the same thing happened. A lot of packets are lost. And in the VLAN 88, you can see it's like nothing's happened. Latency is still not bad and there's no packet lost. Now let's see some statistics running the exact same command. Only, only ping 10 times, 10 packets.
in the VLAN 1 client, high latency, 90% packet loss, and in the VLAN 88 client, 4 millisecond latency, and 0% packet loss. So you see the effect of using a dedicated management VLAN. So if now I want to do some network management from VLAN 1 client, I simply cannot do it. From VLAN 88, there's no impact. Okay, of course, in real world, you want to secure your different VLANs using firewalls so that VLAN 1 cannot access your management VLAN, maybe. Okay, we have discussed the two major benefits of introducing management VLAN for your unified network. First, security. Second, you want to isolate your management network from the normal user network so that the user data packets won't impact your network management activities. As the last part of the video, let's discuss how you want to implement the management VLAN in unified network. There are two different approaches to implement management network for unified devices. First, a very natural thinking. We need a management network VLAN, right? Okay, let me create one. Let's assume before you create a new one, you already have the default network VLAN 1. Then you have a admin VLAN, super secured, and a insecured IoT VLAN. So now you create a brand new VLAN for management network. Network. Then every time when you have a new unified device, you want to adopt it to your new network, you may or may not have troubles. For some specific devices, for example, the cloud key, for example, UXG Pro, it's very tricky or sometimes impossible to add them in your new VLAN. And sometimes you have to manipulate the connected port profile. Sometimes you have to resort to the layer 3 adoption. A lot of unexpected troubles will happen down the road. But if the new device is not unified device, for example, you have a new computer, then the way to add to your network is very natural because if you don't do any special thing, your new device will be automatically joining your default network. That may be exactly what you want, right? So this approach may cause you trouble in the future if you want to adopt new unified devices or it may cause you trouble if you want to change the management network VLAN for your existing unified devices. If you are interested, I do have a video posted long ago talking about how to introduce such new management network, how to add your existing devices. Then the second approach, maybe this is the one you want to implement, even though it sounds not very reasonable. Because by default, if you do not do anything, your new unified devices will be joining the default network right? Okay, so then let's keep it that way. Let's use the default network as the dedicated unified management VLAN. And for all other devices, we want them to join separate VLANs. So let's assume you also have admin VLAN, IoT VLAN, nothing will be changed to them, but you want to create a new VLAN for your regular devices. So then in the future, if you have new unified devices you want to adopt to your network, it will be naturally easily adopted without any fancy operations. It will join the default network by default. But if you have a, let's say, new computer, you may need some extra efforts to make it join your new VLAN you created. For example, you want to change the port profile, the native VLAN for that part. Right? This is not difficult, but it may cost you a lot of effort down the road. So you can see for the two approaches, either one is not perfect and either one has its own pros and cons. But to make it work 100% of the time, you may want to consider the second approach, even though it doesn't sound right when you initially think about it. Okay, thanks for watching.